Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to the Igor tutorial series for CE415-515. Hopefully this is the last installment in our series, if we can get through the last three, three things here in enough time that uh, my video recorder doesn't crash. So let's go ahead and get started with um, making histograms. Um, making a histogram um, is relatively easy. Essentially all we have to do is go to click on the analysis tab. We go down to histogram. Um, then we have to select the data wave that we want to make a histogram of. So in this case, we'll make a histogram of CO. Um, we'll just leave this output wave as auto. Um, the, we'll just make sure that we display this in a new graph. Um, you could do it on your own, but it's much easier if it just if the computer just does it by itself. And the main decision you have to make here is whether you want to manually set your bins or have your bins set automatically. So typically, I start at least start out with having my bins set automatically. Um, so we'll do that. I usually choose the bottom option, um, and we'll click Do It here. So now we have the graph with your histogram in it. Um, we'll just go ahead and label this graph. So the left axis is the number um, of occurrences. So basically, the number of t the number of times that the that the mix that the species was measured um, inside of each bin. Um, the bottom is the uh, CO mixing ratio in parts per billion. All right, and then we can just uh, adjust our range here. Um, and left axis to, okay, so we'll click do it. And essentially now what we need to do to make this look like a real histogram is we'll double click We'll change um, the mode to bars, make sure that we have a solid fill, and our bar stroke, um, we want to make sure the bar stroke is on. I mean, you can you can have a not solid fill. It doesn't really matter, actually. You just want to have something. Um, you don't want to have none. So we'll have a solid fill. We'll click do it, and here's your bar graph. You can see that um, you've got a sort of Gaussian shape. Um, one thing you can do to check and see if you have a real Gaussian shape is you can go to analysis and click curve fitting. You can go into function. You can fit a Gaussian distribution to your graph. Um, you want to select COPPB histogram because that's what it's automatically named. You can leave the X data as calculated. Click do it. Um, and so what you want to do now um, is just make sure that this is prominent enough that you can see it. So we'll change the line size to three. And you can see that you've got a nice Gaussian shape to your distribution. You've got a bit of a tail off to the right. Pretty typical of uh, air quality measurements that you have, um, uh, you know, you have a tail off to the right where you've got a lot more higher measurements than you, uh, and you have a lot of the lower measurements concentrated all together. So anyway, that's how you make a histogram. Um, you can also, you can then, after you've done this um, with the automatically selected bins, you can also go back and select your own bins. So you can see that we've, we basically have gone from 100 to maybe 600. So let's just go back into analysis and make our own histogram here. Um, if we go manually select bins, if we want to do 100 bins and give ourselves a little bit more resolution, we we'll start our bins at 100 since we don't have any data under 100, and we'll set our bin width to 5, so we'll get up to 600. So we'll just display our output, click do it, and here is our new histogram right here. Um, we can then uh, remove this fit, auto scale our axis, and yeah, you can see you've got a little bit more resolution than the old one had because you have more bars on the graph. Um, the peak isn't going to be as high as you saw because um, because uh, because you've got more bars, so you've got all of the data spread out into more different bins. So anyway, that's how you make histograms, either with the uh, auto select or with uh, the manual select. I think the auto select is a perfectly acceptable way to make, make histograms, so I don't expect you guys to um, select your bins on your own. Um, and so moving right along from histograms, um, we're gonna go ahead and check in this, uh, a couple of just of the analysis um, portions of, of, of Igor. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our graph, our very simple time series plot. Um, and so you can see how noisy this data is. You've got a lot of um, bumps and spikes and all kinds of stuff. 
And so you might want to smooth you might want to smooth that data um, so that you can um, maybe recognize more uh, long-term trends in it. So the way that you would um, smooth the data is to average it over a longer time period. So currently, um, this is one minute data, meaning it's averaged to every every minute. So we have a we have a function here. So you go into macros and click on um, macros and time average. And this time average function can average um, your data to a different time uh, interval. So I'm going to average it to 30 minutes. Um, so I'll select the time wave, which is the time. I'll select our CO wave once again. Um, I'll leave this here at 30 minutes. And then to get my beginning time, I need to um, I need to get the number that corresponds to the first time that we measured. And actually, I'm going to start it a little bit before the first time. See, we so this, since the first time was at two minutes, I want to start it on the even hour. So I'm just going to copy over that first row to a new um, to a new table. I'm going to set this to zero, and then to get the number, I'm going to switch the format to general. And then I need to make sure that I have all the digits of this number, because if I don't have all the digits and I copy it in scientific notation, it won't get transferred over to this panel here. So I'll copy that over, and once we have that all done, we are ready to go. We can just click Time Average, and a table will pop up with our uh, Time Average data. So we have here, we have the time. The time shown here is the beginning of each interval. So this average here corresponds to the average CO concentration between 0 hours, 0 minutes, and, 30, and 0 hours, 30 minutes. And then this corresponds to between 30 and 1 hour, etc. Um, the standard deviation is just the standard deviation of this mean. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to ap append that to a, um, a graph, we'll just go ahead and do that on our CO graph, so you can see the difference between the one minute and the um, hour data. We'll just click append traces to graph. We need to click average the time, and then average CO, and we'll click do it. And then we can just, we can switch the increase the line weight so it pops out a little more, but you can see that this is just a smooth version of the other data trace. So that's how you that's how you average data over a different time interval. Um, can be useful for you, um, especially if you have really noisy data and it's making it difficult to identify um, the trends in the data. Okay, so I'll go ahead and move right along to dial averaging. Um, Dial averaging essentially is um, taking the average of just one chunk of the day um, over the course of your study um, over the entire day to make a representative day out of the entire study. So it's sort of hard to understand what it is. So essentially what you would do is you would take all the data for between, um, say, 1.30 in the morning and 2 o'clock in the morning if you're doing a 30-minute period. Um, from both all, from the 25th, the 26th, and the 27th, average all of that data together, and you get one number, and then you assign that for the 1.30 to 2 a.m. period. And essentially, what you do then is you do that for each chunk of the day, and then you get a reference a day that's representative of the entire study for a flute. So we'll go ahead and do that using the data masher. So you'll need your data masher panel here. You want to click on the dial stats tab. We'll just do 30-minute dial averages. Um, we'll select our data wave. So again, we'll just do CO. Um, and if I can find it, here we go, CO PPB. We'll select our time wave, which is the time. And then we simply click Calculate Dial Stats, and a table will pop up with all the data we'll need here. So this um, CO PPB average, that is the average for each uh, period during the day. This time average is the, uh, the time of day. So I'll go ahead and switch the format just to time here so you can see it. So essentially that is the middle of the time interval. So this would be between uh, 0 and 30 minutes at the beginning of the day. This would be between um, 0 or 1 o'clock and 1.30, for example. Um, the CO, this one over here, is the median. Um, and then this is the standard deviation. So to graph, so to graph our dial, um, our dial averages here, We'll just go into Windows and make a new graph. We'll simply graph dial time average against dial average here. And there is our dial plot. Um, we can 
Well, one thing I like to do usually is a uh, few lines and markers here just so that we can see all of our points. Um, and then we can fix up our graph. Um, the left axis would be CO. Bottom is going to be this time of day. And then we can switch our bottom to date and time. One thing you want to know is to go to Ticks and Grids and you can click Suppress Date um, to get rid of the 1904. Uh, and then you can go over to um, Axis Range. It's important. I usually just type in 000 to get put it at 12 a.m. and then 2400 to put it at the other 12 a.m. around the other side of the clock. So we click Do It, and here's our graph. We also might want to expand our axis range here, so we might want to go from like 100 to 400. Um, the other thing you can do with these plots is you can put error bars on them. Um, and so air, putting error bars on plots is obviously important to show the uncertainty of your measurements. Um, so to do that, you'll double click, and you can click on the error bars check mark. It'll pull up this dialog box. Um, you'll want to use the plus minus wave. So you can go into here and find your diel standard deviation. And then your Y minus will just be the same as Y plus, so essentially it'll just put equal error bars on top and bottom. And if you click OK and you click Do It, there you have there you have error bars on your plots. Um, the other way that you can um, show the error or the uncertainty or the variability, I guess is a better way of putting it, in the diel averages is to just do a shaded region instead. And so the way that you would do that is you need to make two more waves. So make waves um, would be, let's just say, Diel CO plus standard deviation and then Diel CO minus standard deviation. And then we'll make 48 rows because that's how many rows are in these uh, the other um, wave. We'll pen these two columns to the table. And then we'll just calculate um, what what they should be. So we'll click on, we'll make, we'll put diel CO minus standard deviation is equal to diel CO average minus diel CO um, standard deviation. see that this is equal to um, the average minus standard deviation. Makes perfect sense. And then we'll just go ahead and do the plus side of things. Okay, and there we have it. So now to put your error ranges or your uncertain or your variability ranges here, you'll append both of those traces to the graph. Um, We'll need the diel time, and we'll need diel plus and minuses here. So you can see that they're the exact same as the error bars. You'll just double click to go in. We can take off the error bars in this case. Um, and then we'll just have to fill to next. Um, we'll do, say, 25%. We'll fill to next on the other one. And we'll click do it. And now you'll just have to right click down here, click send it back, right click down there again, click send it back again, and there you have your error, your your variability range for the diel averages. Um, and I think that just about wraps it up. So thank you everybody for watching the Igor tutorial videos. I hope this is a big help on the way to uh, using Igor for your um, lab projects. And uh, thanks again for watching.